here are the five biggest problems I found with running LTL. Now the first problem is that a lot of LTL shippers will take load broker freight just to help fill the trailer to bump up the revenue and you're going into docks that don't often receive big trucks. So you get to this place, you park out on the street, you walk around the back to find their loading dock and you find out it's just a nightmare back there. There's telephone poles, there's fire hydrants, there's a dumpster, employees cars parked all over there and about 30 feet of space to put in a 53 foot trailer. And you look at it and you shake your head and go, well, this isn't going to work. You walk in to see the receiver and he gives you the famous line, we get trucks in here all the time. And you have no idea how many times I've heard that over the years. And the problem is that the receivers can't tell a UPS truck from a 53 foot truck, but you get trucks in here all the time. Well, buddy, this 53 footer isn't fitting into your dump. So you better bring the fork truck and a pump truck outside and we'll unload in the driveway. I'm not smashing up my equipment to try to get into this crap hole of yours. It's not worth my time for a couple hundred bucks worth of skids. So there's problem number one. You run into these receivers that have no idea what room trucks need. Number two, the time it takes to pedal an LTL load. Let's say you've got three drops in Chicago and Chicago is huge. The suburbs are spread out all over the place. The typical company guy does the first drop for free, which I never understood. And then maybe you get $25 a drop after that. So it takes all day to run around Chicago. What are you made after the first drop is free? 50 bucks for an entire work day. And do you get paid by the mile between these drops? Virtually never. Most carriers don't pay that. They just pay the drop money. So you've worked all day, you've made 50 bucks. You know, the LTL has cost you time. The other thing LTL has cost you is hours of service. Don't forget the clock is ticking now with these ELDs and as you're driving around all these little stops, your clock's churning and churning and your hours of service are getting eaten up. Number three, a lot of LTL receivers want you to book appointments especially grocery houses. And so you get caught up in traffic, road construction, bad weather, you get delayed at another drop. Your time frame is out the window. So you sit overnight for a drop you didn't get off that day. And that's not time effective and that's using up your hours and it's eating up your money. Number four, there's always some meathead who thinks his one skid on the trailer is the most important skid you've got on board and he doesn't care about the rest of your freight the rest of your deliveries he's on your dispatcher and your dispatcher's on you for usually usually a couple skids one a small lot anyway they seem to think it's it's high priority stuff that they've paid regular rate for and they're just on you all the time bugging you when you're trying to get your work done if they'd wanted that kind of express service they should have called ups but they've been too cheap to do that so they've stuck you with it but they still expect the same service level as UPS or somebody like that. And it's just, you know, I'll get there when I get there. And that's the end of the story. No matter how many times you call me, it's not going to speed me up. It's just going to tick me off. And number five, at the end of the day, when you've done all these multi drops, and if you're a company guy getting $25 a drop, and it's taking you three or four days to unload the trailer instead of traveling by the mile, if you've lost four days pedaling LTL as compared to traveling by the mile on a straight load, you've lost $200 a day times four days is 800 bucks. Did your drops and picks pay 800 bucks? Probably not. So you've just kind of blown your whole budget running LTL. Sure, the carriers made good money on it and you've lost money. So for the most part, unless the carrier pays really well, avoid LTL and that's my advice on that. However, if trucking paid the way it should pay, which is by the hour, you'd have made a good living running that LTL and, and you don't have a problem with that because you're in this deal for money, not for the sake of the carrier. So there's another argument to get paid by the hour. Let me tell you a little story that happened to me during an LTL run and I was, I was running on my own authority, filling my own trailer. I had taken this, this last stop but it was on the nose of the trailer because I loaded it first, just to just for the extra revenue. So I I'd, I'd taken 
this one drop of 30 electric golf carts. Now these aren't the kind you ride in. These are the kind that you pull behind you, but they're electrically powered. So they walk behind the golfer. I had 30 of these things on and it was my last drop before I was empty and I could go down to Salinas to load produce. The drop was in San Jose. I'd been calling the receiver and calling him. Couldn't get an answer. So finally I figured out where the address was. I thought I'm just going to go there, kick this off and go load my produce. So I get up in the morning first thing, find this place in San Jose and it's a residential suburb. And I'm thinking, oh boy, here we go. I'm probably in the wrong place. I find the address. It's a house. It's a guy's house with a garage. I'm thinking, oh, this just can't be right. So I start across the street to ask a neighbor. And here comes some old guy pulling an oxygen uh, thing behind him. He's got the full mask on so he can breathe. And he's pulling a little oxygen tank behind him. Comes up and says, no, no. He says, you're at the right place. This guy's a golf pro. He just wants it hand bombed into his garage. <laughs> I'm thinking, well, I'm great. And I can tell by looking at this guy with the oxygen tank that he's gonna be a no help to me. Of course, the, the carts are on the front of the trailer and it's starting to get hot in San Jose about 10 o'clock in the morning by the time I get this all straightened out. So I open the trailer doors, hand bomb these 30 carts one at a time because they're about, about 60, 70 pounds a cart hand bomb them all to the back of the trailer, they're in boxes, and I start throwing them over my shoulder one at a time and hauling them into this guy's garage. So by the time I get done, it's about noon. I'm physically exhausted, I'm soaked with sweat. I'm just wiped and I'm thinking, how much did this pay me? And it, was, it paid me an extra 300 bucks. And I just blew my guts out and lost half of a day delivering these stupid golf carts to a golf pro that was out on the course instead of helping me unload his stupid freight. It was Ira Mad and I, that was at one of those points I swore off doing cheap LTL for load brokers because it just, just fried me. San Jose got me close to Salinas where I was aiming for. If I hadn't taken those stupid golf carts for a lousy 300 bucks, I'd have been a day ahead on my way home. Anyway, that's my story with LTL. Drive carefully, think about the kind of work you want to do what it's going to pay you and how it's going to pay because this is your livelihood the object of the game is to make money and i want you to make money not be somebody's slave doing it take care and i'll see you on the back call